It was really just like a targeted thing for people that he's just trying to suppress. Yeah, any kind of... that's totally what it is. Wow, it's very, it's yeah, like it's like small town politics, but it's Surrey. <laughs> Surrey politics. I didn't expect that to start yeah. off. Yeah, that's a perfect intro. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, yes. Yeah, uh, anyway, it's just an on podcast. And this is Kier, lowercase dream. Hello. And Allie from the band Primp. Hi. <laughs> We're here. Yeah, exactly. Here we are. In and, your bedroom. Yeah, I know, right? Isn't this weird? This is cool. Yeah, it's like, this yeah. This is where you live. It's just, this, this is, is you my live. main form of, of, this is the main spot where I inhabit. Yeah. Okay. This is... Not all that different from my day to day, except for the two of you being here. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks for having us. Yeah. Well, you know, it was. It felt like, like, uh, getting the two of us at least into a room is like difficult with scheduling and stuff because we're both just so busy. Mm -hmm. This is adulthood. We used to just hang out every week. Yeah. You think about that? Yeah. Well, absolutely. I, I think I remember a time coming home from a band practice very late a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, in the band that we used to play in, Western Jaguar, mm -hmm. and being so tired because we had a big string of shows lined up, and then Brent, our, our bassist at the time, mm -hmm. who's now in Toronto, he said, hey, listen, this is, this is like the good times now. We're not going to be able to be able to play this many shows and have this many practices back to back with this much time ever again, so enjoy it. Do you remember? I, that's just something I remember. Brent is weirdly prophetic that way. <laughs> he really Sounds is. Like I yeah. wish you could have met Brent. He I never was, met him. He's a yeah. big, tall guy. He's quite large. And uh, just very benevolent. Sounds yeah. like a gentle giant. Mm -hmm. That's that's pretty accurate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He is a yeah. Brent, Brent, and I were became like inseparable throughout like cool. high school, and then and then Brent got a gig as like the guitar guy at the Long and McQuaid in Abbotsford, and through that just kind of wormed his way in into being the bass player for everybody in Abbotsford, and then when Western Jaguar, because I think Jeff originally had his brother on drums. Yeah. 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 I remember those and times. it was, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then, and then uh, one day Brent was like, yeah, come out to, come out, come out and jam with this band. And then that's where I met you. That's many years this, ago. Yeah. Now. Think of, think about how that was almost a decade ago, my dude. No way. Yeah. Oh my goodness. That was in like 2014. Oh. <laughs> but anyway, I try to talk about like the music industry in Vancouver here on this podcast. So, Allie, you make music. What's that I about? Do. What's it about? What's that about? Yeah. What's music about? No, your music. Um, well, I haven't really been playing music since the pandemic started. <sighs> kind of took a long break. All right, yeah. So, just recently we started getting back together again, making sure that we still know how to play. Yeah. Making sure we still remember our songs, and Got we do strings. somehow. Wow! It's, yeah, actually, we were quite impressed with ourselves because we're all very pessimistic people, and we came into <laughs> band practice, and we were like, "This is gonna be a fucking mess." Like, <laughs> everyone, just let's get through this. If you make a mistake, if you make a million mistakes, whatever, let's just, just get going. through it. And we were like, "Wow, we remember everything." Nice. Still got it. Yeah. Yeah, still got it. <laughs> like, doesn't mean that we're not making Ooh. mistakes because, like, that we've always made mistakes. Yeah. Um, but it's good to be back at it and not writing new stuff, but I am workshopping some songs that we never finish. Right, yeah, yeah. Just kind of finding the love and what you left behind. Yeah, well, taking some old stuff and kind of revamping it, mm -hmm. stuff we never recorded and reworking it. Uh, it's been two years, you know. Yeah. Our yeah. tastes have changed a little bit. It's it's interesting, right? It's It's weird when you come back to it and it's like, it's like you never left in some ways, but in, <laughs> in other ways you're like... I think we've all kind of, whether we wanted to or not, grown a lot in the last couple of years. Yeah, you like, I, you kind of kept playing music all the way through. Yeah, that's right. I mean, right? My, my main project was it is Casinos, was Casinos, like, yeah. like the indie yeah. rock band that I've played in for over a decade now. Yeah. But because we couldn't do practices, um, you know, like many other musicians, I decided to turn inward yeah, and yeah. work on personal work in an earnest way for the first time. Um, and that was that was two years ago that I did that. Um, so yeah, I kept doing things. Yeah. I, I tried my hand at playing, uh, <clears throat> pl playing live stream shows and things like that, which I think we all lost our appetite for eventually. Yeah. Um, 
But I, mean, uh, yeah, I bought all these fucking cameras, dude. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm just trying to justify the expense. <laughs> yeah, I see. You know, but what's it been like for you? To, like, just go back to old Primp songs, by the way, and just kind of play them again. Like, I don't know. It's weird. We just did it thing? at the last one, yeah. like at the last practice that we had for the first time. So, uh-huh. like, uh. So there's some that we hate, you know, every band has that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some that we hate now. And there were two in particular that we didn't like. I'm not going to... Maybe, maybe I should. One of them's called... Call them out. <laughs> yeah, one of them's called... I wrote fuck them. Fuck yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, fuck, like, fuck, fuck, fuck my songs. going to get mad. <laughs> like, uh, one of them's called Overflow. It's off our first album, Half Bloom. It's the last one on the album. And actually, I really like the verse melody, but I feel like it's structurally just kind of boring. Right. Because, like, we wrote those songs when we were, like, 19. Nice. Like, I'm turning 25. Yeah. So it's been a minute since I wrote it. Um, and then we had another one that was basically like an, a joke song that I wrote to play live. Um, cause we went through a, a pretty long punk phase. Mm-hmm. There was like a year and a half where we were playing mostly punk music. Mm-hmm. And so I wrote this song that we have never recorded, that we've never named. So no one will recognize it, but we all kind of grew to hate it because I was really inspired by like... Um, Riot Girl vocals, and mm. now we all find them very whiny. <laughs> so we decided we're going to take the guitar from those two songs, mash them up. I wrote a new chorus. I wrote a bridge at the end, and now we're like, finally going to jam it, see how it goes. So it's very, it's like we're Frankensteining a song, That's and at some point we're going to lay it down. That's sweet. And they, are we going to, do you think we'll hear it at the, the show that's being played June 25th I at don't, Red Gate? I don't think this show, but oh, the one okay. after no, that, no. yeah, probably. <laughs> okay, sweet. Like July, probably. Nice. Cool. Yeah. So so uh, for those that are uninitiated with uh, with Primp, what, uh, how, would you, how would you describe it? What's your uh, what's your like one sentence elevator pitch? And I I fucking hate putting people in this position. But... I don't even have yeah. one. Yeah, um, right. Nobody does. What kind of monster? <laughs> yeah. Alternative. Like I used to say, alternative garage rock, but now we're a lot softer. Um, we have a lot more like, I think, sort of like dream pop sensibilities now in our mm. writing than we used to. Cool. Um, like indie. Sort of bands like Pale Hound and like expressing, I think, more of like our love for Lucy Dacus and the Phoebe Bridgers yeah. and like really leaning into the prettiness of our music instead of the aggressive right. sound. Yeah. We like to kind of play with both now, have like the aggressive side and the soft side. Well, that's a little more honest because nobody's just one or the other. You know, <laughs> yeah. Well, we're kind of known, I think, like that's sort of our style is that we go between. A light verse and a heavy chorus, a light verse and a heavy chorus, mm-hmm. um, like Screamy. Yeah. Which is a song that scares children. <laughs> I, I like it when you're talking about it. Is there a story attached to scaring children, or is oh. that just like, like a blanket Like, I played statement? a show at Girls Rock Camp Fieldhouse once, and there's this video of all of the girls in the rock camp and their parents, and then us and like five other people. We're playing a show in a park. And it's just, like, no one's into it. <laughs> like, we're all... It's just, like, a... Di- it looks like a picnic, basically. <laughs> and we're playing this, like, heavy song. And so Screamy, it's just, like, the chorus is just me playing power chords and my drummer and my bass is screaming as hard as I possibly right. like, screaming, yeah. like... That song's like a whirlpool. It feels like a whirlpool of chaos. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, uh, it's like but it's fir- really funny because our friend took a video and they were, like panning like it's like a video it's like of the sun and the park and it looks so serene and like all these children and then just my drummer screaming and like thrashing on the drums and everyone just sitting on the other side of us not matching the energy everybody's everybody's you got to go through some shows like that where you're just like one for the books delivering the goods and nobody's having it you know what some girls came up to us afterwards and were like that was really cool and i was like i did it for you yeah yeah Mm -hmm. i wanted to show you what was possible yeah. yeah, you could be that that weird annoying band yeah. Yeah. in the park on an afternoon <laughs> screaming someday. Well, I'm yeah. I hope that they I hope that they learned something. You know. I don't know. Maybe I'll 
I'll see him at the next show. I hope so. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we're getting uh, we're getting to the point now, or at least I feel this way, and I've I've brought this up on the last couple of episodes, where it's like. I don't know. I feel like I'm getting to be a little bit of like one of the old guys on the scene, you know, and I've just got to, you know, I'm, I'm sort of coming to terms with that. And it's maybe less that I feel like the old guy and more that I have, you know, stuff to look back on as well as forward to. Yeah. Whereas previously, I've just only been looking forward to, to what's going to happen. And then with the pandemic and everything, my perspective has changed where it's like, oh, all of this can go away, <laughs> you know, and then it's, uh, and then the, and then you got to re refill the holes in your life with, uh, with, with stuff that's a little bit more, you know, wholesome and find, find it in yourself to like find what makes you happy. Right. And so then I'm, now I'm looking back at like all these, these times that came before and then looking forward into, the Vancouver music scene in particular, and just kind of thinking about what we kind of have to deal with all the time, you know, like it's, uh, it's weird how, how there's so many cool people in the city and there's so many cool projects and they're, they're just kind of disconnected from each other. You know what I mean? Like it, it feels, uh, it feels very, uh, scattered a lot of the times right. it's just very weird and i and i would but the thing is is i would i would have told you the same thing in 2017 but but from a different point of view you know what i mean it's weird mm. but what do you think of that because you're in a few projects right um when it comes to the disconnectedness well the disconnectedness well i don't know what are your what are your thoughts on um how it feels like you know booking shows and just like the the sort of general vibe of people just like showing up to things you know all of it well i think in the bands that i've played in um the the frequency in which i was able to book shows uh just felt always kind of disjointed mm -hmm. um and it, there never it never there was never this sense of uh i guess a hub um maybe you know culturally or even very very literally what people would Mm -hmm. maybe congregate to see the most shows maybe these days that could be red gate you know a lot of great shows happen there. yeah we were talking um, about but, that earlier yeah. but yeah uh I, I would say um in the past i think i would i i, I would agree that there's that sense of disconnectedness i don't know why that is, is yeah it because no. things are clicky um I, I don't think that it's even that for me you know like it's like i've never i mean i'm i'm, I'm not a super outward going out all the time dude but mm -hmm. it's like i've never felt like the like i've been on the outside it's just but feel i've always felt like it's you know the outside of what <laughs> it's yeah. like I'm, I'm i'm on the outside of I'm, if i'm on the outside of something i don't know about it <laughs> right. you know but right there's uh yeah it's, I, I wonder how much of it can be sort of um like attributed to something more systemic you know ali like you are um an event programmer and you've seen firsthand some of like the systemic barriers that comes to when it comes to booking shows and organizing mm -hmm. shows, mm -hmm. be it venue costs, noise bylaws. We were talking about this the other day. Do you think that plays a role in, I guess, <clears throat> uh, cr creating a, you the, know, any kind of perceived sense of disconnectedness yeah. in, in the scene? The general vibe. Yeah, I do. I think there's a lot of barriers. Um, I also think that like, we have to consider what connectedness would really look like for mm -hmm. us. Like, what would the opposite of that look like for you? Would it be having more variety on bills? Would it be having more people know each other? Would it be having more people be successful? Because I think a lot of the time we're like, oh, the, the scene is so this way and that way. But then we're like, okay, well, what do we want that we don't have? Yeah, it's a, I mean, that's a good point. It's just, it feels like, it feels like there's a lot of, like, there's, there's always there's a show every weekend, right? There's or there's a, a show or two every weekend. I, I always I I never see my friends' names on the bills, you know, opening up for you know the cooler touring acts that are coming through mm. town, right? You go to somewhere like Toronto, you know, and the 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 Zolas are coming through town or something like that. You know, they're gonna pick from some of these these local acts to get stuff like that. You know, it's like things are 
kind of like one time casinos got asked uh to open up for like a uh, one-hit wonder the band struts the struts sorry yeah. thanks for having yeah. us open <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. AJ's yeah. Words I, I yeah i said it not them yeah yeah well i mean yeah. you know they had, a, they had a yeah they had a really big summer i was know? really surprised I, th- I think that was uh what was the it was like canada events or something i can't remember yeah no i like remember you were really firms. surprised yeah yeah that it's like i don't know very big professional opportunity so yeah. like more yeah. some more kind of like cross tier yeah yeah that's connection. what i mean it's a yeah, yeah. it's kind of like yeah we've kind of got this like it's not like a class system you know what i mean yeah but it is system. yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it feels very yeah there's a it's a symptom of class systems yeah, yeah just in general yeah yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it was yeah in that for that i'm like after seeing that show and thinking like oh that's cool that's my friend's band you know and there and you were even living in vancouver at the time you were based no, like the band was, was based out of I, abbotsford we were still living in abbotsford so i was like how why did you yeah. hire us exactly and i remember it, like, music. And I, yeah it just, it just doesn't did. seem like i knew i knew when i was on stage that night i was like man i'm probably never gonna get to play a show like this ever again yeah so have you no, I haven't. That was 2016 that happened. A pessimistic attitude of yours, Kier. I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know, but it just it felt yeah. too easy. It was it, it was, was weird, very they interesting. They, I remember like, was I was like at the call. show. Yeah, yeah, cold call, and I remember looking around, and it was a, and it was the uh, all the people that were you know the built-in audience for the band the the yeah. headlining band, mm-hmm. and then about a dozen people that drove out from Abbotsford. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And, and I was like, and they were all the same people that were at, you know, the Abbotsford shows, and I was, but in the Imperial, you yeah. know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was, it was really, really fun. Yeah. Um, I remember uh, people digging it, except for, like, this one guy. Just, like, this, like, this middle-aged man. He's just, like... Just mad-dogging you. Scary. Just mad. I was like, I was like... Scary. Shit, dude, sor- yeah. sorry. And it was a great yeah. show. You guys... It's not like you guys came up, went up there and sucked, you know? It was, like, one of those... Um, I was like, fucking, this is it. Kier's on the way up, you know? And, then, you know, casinos is happening now. And, uh... We had security. That was weird. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. So, like, yeah. escort that. Yeah, yeah, they were, like, remember, escorting you out yeah, to the it, show. It was cool to see people at every part of the machine because you're at that like you, you're suddenly seeing this sort of strata of show yeah. where there are so many more staff than you're used to like there was mm-hmm. a monitor tech yeah, yeah, yeah there was like a, a front yeah, of house you know, tech yeah, yeah exactly there was like you yeah. know, your production manager and stuff honestly the best way to have it more than right? one monitor mm-hmm. on stage too just, big big just deal sick. we were pretty monitors. spoiled yeah, yeah. <laughs> we yeah. felt we felt spoiled and when they offered us security green it was like room? really yeah yeah, yeah. green yeah. room rocks i love yeah. having a green room it, yeah. was, it was nice Free but you water. know that's the thing like if the stra- if the stratified nature of the kinds of shows and events was i guess less stratified I don't know. Would would that help anything? I, I yeah, I, it would. I think it would. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. it's never gonna happen because like promoters need to sell enough tickets mm-hmm. say, in order motive. for it to. You know, there is no winning under late capitalism. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, no, it's a very not to be that guy. It kind of yeah. I mean, it's, it's the truth. <laughs> it's, it's it's what we've been hinting at this whole time. But the uh, yeah, like the reality of it is, it's just this. It's DIY or die when it comes to like getting little acts with talent to get attention yeah you kind of mm-hmm. you sort of have to it's what poor people always have to do you have to crowdfund yeah yeah get every get get your whole neighborhood to pay investor. for it yeah yeah or sell mm-hmm. it to a record label yeah but you know we all know how that goes sometimes get, get big on tiktok <laughs> or that that's a new thing that's a new thing that's, that's really awesome actually that yeah. i think is um, unless you're unless you're halsey you know What's wrong with Halsey? Oh, that was, so the so the the news I don't know the, the news cycle has been sort of dominated lately by I'm 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 a lot more into TikTok than I ever thought I would be, but it's been yeah, dominated. Anyway, so it started with Halsey going, "I have a new song out," and this is on a TikTok. I have a new song out, and the label won't let me drop it until I have a viral moment about it on TikTok. Right. Oh, that's oh, gross. Okay. Yeah, and uh, and and going, and then so then it started this whole divisive conversation of, okay, so is this a fake viral moment, or in her doing that, in yeah. like you know, Very in that, or yeah. is this a genuine, yeah, you know, cry for is this help? A publicity yeah, stunt yeah, or is someone yeah. being manipulated? Or or is it just? As simple as, because the, the, the songs that, you know, go crazy viral on TikTok to go crazy viral on Spotify and make the labels more money, you know, mm. that's, you know, it, it's, it's a pretty direct pipeline. I think Vox just did a really, really great video on YouTube about this, uh, this sort of general connectivity between somebody going big on TikTok and uh, somebody going really big. And then if a label gets in and just sneaks in right at the right time, they can... Oh, yeah 
blow them up to like massive status like that what's that dude ty ty verdes or whatever that guy's name is but anyway the uh yeah so then so then after halsey posted this video then all these other artists like uh florence from florence and the machine you know same thing and like all these artists going like the labels are really pushing us to like have our tiktok moments because you know they you know they artists like lizzo just crush it on tiktok Mm -hmm. and then they have these uh these really big uh, followings and they have a really great sort of relationship with their fans and you know this whole thing mm-hmm. blah 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 and so mm-hmm. now a lot of uh, that you know it we've kind of have the, the part of this sort of capitalist infected mindset is people aren't really taking chances on their music from a commercial standpoint anymore the people you know that kind of gatekeep whether or not you get to play a cooler show are going like, oh, okay, well, do you have an audience? It's like, oh, but, you know, it'd be cool if I could play an opening slot at the show with the audience, you know, and, and like, build it up that way. It'd be yeah. cool if I could, you know, if you'd take a chance on, take a chance on me, you know, mm-hmm. quote, ABBA, you know, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and start to build it up. And then it's just kind of this chicken or the egg scenario where, <laughs> where it's... Yeah. Yeah. It is a little disheartening. It's, you know what I mean? It sucks, I, you know. As but. as an artist, I don't um I don't really gun for the idea of commercial success and I've kind of Me neither. I, I have because no. what I have the energy for and what I have the appetite for is my my own definition of what is success to me. Mm-hmm. You know? and for me it's always been about I guess having fun with the music. Yeah. And making something that is fulfilling for my soul first. And right now I don't have you know, to, to, uh, to, um, my, my own disadvantage, you know, I, I don't have the energy to maybe market things properly in the, in the way that I would to kind of get the scale that mm-hmm. might be, might be nice. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's, that's where my energy level is at now. Which is know? a shame because your shit's, your shit's pretty hot, dude. Well, you, had some, you. you should have some hot shit now and then. I'm always surprised. Not, I, I shouldn't <laughs> say that. I'm always, I, 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 I I'm always surprised at the subject matter that your music covers because you're Is such a right? you're such a happy positive dude whenever I'm around you and <laughs> and your music like t- hits these really like gut punchy notes sometimes <laughs> you know it's like like or like yeah there's I can think of a few casino songs where you're just like fucking swearing all through them and just being a badass and you just take on this whole persona that I that I that, that I just worship you know there's um there's, I think when I was recording uh, the songs Push Bike and Bocelli for Casinos, that was the latest yeah. single that we released in 20, maybe 18 or 19, mm-hmm. um, I was incredibly depressed, yeah. and I have kind of forgot who I was for a long time. Right. And, um, you know, even my producer, Felix Fung, at the time would be like, who is this kid, like, screaming on this? Yeah. And I, I was wondering, too, because I, yeah. I would listen back to these recordings and be like, who is that? Huh. Like, that doesn't feel like me. And every now and then when I listen to those songs, those recordings again, mm-hmm. I'm like, I don't know. I, I, I'm reminded of, of who I am. And that's kind of why casinos, even though I think it's a project that I've, I've been in it for a long time and I keep feeling like it's finished giving to uh-huh. me, it finds ways to kind of give back. And yeah. we've been sort of working on a new LP as of late mm-hmm. that um, that explores a lot of themes of, um, you, you know, that, that I, of mi- minimization and right. overcoming that don't have to just do with me, but I think a lot of people have dealt with that of making yourself feel small. Mm-hmm. And you're really not. And yeah, that's that's been kind of nice. Th- those are the themes I've been really enthusiastic about writing about lately when it comes to um, casinos, at least. Nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. I I hope I get to hear it soon. Yes, I hope so too. <laughs> um, soon, in due time. Uh, yeah, I mean... B- besides besides casinos, I think what I've been more active with is lowercase dream, mm-hmm. which is like like kind of the way I described like the I, I think the first time that I really decided to create personal work in a fulsome way. Yeah, and I kind of um, rediscovered what it's like to be scared of being perceived as a as an artist. You know, you think you do it for so long, and then you you get you nervous about it for again for the first time, mm-hmm. and like you know, sharing. And like yeah, digging sharing, in, yeah. sharing definitely. I mean, I'm playing with a trio on the 25th as oh. as a trio yeah. for the first time. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I announced a single that I'll be releasing at the end of this week on, yeah. on June 17th, and I 
Um, I hate it. <laughs> I hate. I hate the idea. Do you hate announcing. That I hate. Stuff? I hate. Or, yeah. Okay. Or you it's hate the like, single. Yeah. I, not, not the single. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I hate, hate it. Like it's the horrible. Single. Yeah. It's just like the, the process of announcing it. It's always just a. It's it's nerve wracking in a way that I thought maybe I've been over. You know what I mean? You never. You're never over that. You're never over. Mm-hmm. Hey, look at me! You know, yeah. pay attention to me! Yeah. You know, yeah. or at least I'm if not. anything, that feeling's become worse. Yeah, for me. Yeah, over the yeah. Years. yeah. It's, years. it's harder and it's harder. Muscle you have to work out. Yeah. The first time I played uh, some of the first cohort of lowercase dream songs live for anybody was for complete strangers far away. Like I was, I drove to San Francisco and I found an open mic night that was just like you know, it was just a bunch of boomers. And I'm like, hey, I'm here. I'm from Canada. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so there's a simple pleasures cafe and like all these people are like That's a weird vibe. and uh, i just played all these songs and i was terrified this and is, it, oh, yeah. it was kind of an exhilarating feeling to kind of remember that again for the first time because i've been That's playing so music all my life and just to feel that sense of nervousness i just it made me feel so alive to kind of feel that again that's that's that i, I love the pressure. i love <laughs> the image of those like boomers in that cafe coming away coming away from like that was weird yeah, right? <laughs> that's exactly yeah. what i think like that, that was good but yeah. i'm confused yeah. a little bit yeah. like, why why? He, he's so good why did he seem so he nervous that? yeah <laughs> Hi, I'm Kieran. I'm from Canada. Yeah. Plays really sweet tunes and then drifts away forever. Into yeah, <laughs> there's some people that still think about that. Night. Like, yeah. Know, where did yeah. that guy did, go? Did he really did... exist at all? Yeah. <laughs> some question. Uh, I'm yeah. trying to, yeah, I'm trying to think of the, like... Stoked to hear your trio. Yeah. I'm really excited about it. You know, it, that, it's, um, it's, it's been cool to kind of reimagine some of the songs that, uh, I have recorded in a trio in kind of like a different arrangement that isn't possible that isn't on the recordings because mm-hmm. like i don't think we could recreate the recordings right now without right. like becoming arcade fire or some bullshit yeah so yeah. Just so need, pers- so need personnel and yeah, like only, and gear. only i had staff <laughs> yeah. yeah you know what i mean yeah. so yeah it's been cool kind of recreating those songs and uh and uh, it almost feels like rewriting them in, yeah. in kind of a stripped down way that's it's, that's been fun i'm going through the same thing because yeah. i'm doing i'm doing i'm retooling eridonis as a two-piece cool mm. yeah who is number two number two uh it's uh it uh so in 2017 i got hired randomly to uh fill in for written years and it's oh yes Kane from written yes. years ah. that's how we met yeah the basses no the drummer the no, drummer from right, right, right. Years. Yeah. yeah and so uh so we've been hanging out a lot and like we went we went to sc- go see jack white on wednesday because we got oh, r- nice. i randomly got tickets oh, that's right yeah. Jack White. Yeah, yeah he's one of your favorite artists yeah he's, he's one of my boys yeah. yes he's one of my big my big three mm-hmm. but uh yeah so we uh yeah but i know i know what you mean it's a it's a it you you have these big lavish ideas when you're in the studio and you know you start laying down sounds with arturia instruments mm-hmm. you don't own yeah <laughs> you know and and then you uh and then you come away from it and he's like I don't know where to get a Rhodes piano even, like, <laughs> let alone somebody to play it, you know? Like, and then, uh, so for a long time, I was, like, trying to figure out how to do it alone with, like, backing mm-hmm. tracks. And I was like, what if I got, like, a 20-piece band? And you're like, oh, I'm poor. Yeah. And you're exactly, like... Exactly, <laughs> exactly. You know, my, my philosophy towards the recording and recreating, like, live performances has been very much treating every single performance of the song as basically a new recording. Yeah. Like, uh, and that the song can be reinvented every time you play it. Yeah. And that's kind of exciting. Yeah, you it's know? a great feeling, and it's and, and it's and it really underlines the importance of fucking single cam, fucking showing up to shows. You know, yeah. <laughs> that's true. Apparently, yeah. Music Waste had a record turnout. I just had a meeting with them this morning, and they said that they had like, like. They sold like 200 tickets or something, yeah, which is pretty awesome. The festival yeah. was at the Kingsgate Mall, you were saying, right? Partially. Well, there was like, as as always, there were multiple venues. Yeah. Red Gate right. was one of the venues. Yeah, cool. Red Gate is one of very few venues that is still booking shows, to mm-hmm. my knowledge. Yeah. yeah. They've moved locations a number of times. But, but they've been on Main Street for a minute now. Yes. Yeah. Almost, long time. Maybe almost 15 years at that spot. You would know better than I, friend. You just did the story on it. Um, I know the Yeah, just the there. last the last time I talked to the, to the owner... Yeah. I think it was that that society has been around for yeah, like and they've over had to crowdfund too. Yeah, they've been kicked out of places because yeah. of venue costs, mm-hmm. you know, and like leases and places. It's expensive. Prohibitive bullshit that yeah, you yeah know, totally. Yeah, that There's the government could help with. <laughs> um, I interviewed the mayor of Vancouver right. on Wednesday. Yeah, what do you say? Um, <laughs> well, I threw a lot of the questions that that you, <laughs> you want to fight Kennedy Stewart. <laughs> I'm not a journalist anymore, bitch. <laughs> I'll fight you with my bare hands. Um, what did I, I asked him about, you know, some of the, 
uh, frictions towards getting grant funding for um, for for like for running venue for running venues. Mm -hmm. um, I asked him about noise bylaws, right? And he told me that those were things that he, maybe that they could examine, like the, the noise bylaw thing. Mm -hmm. He said to look at it, but he wouldn't commit to anything, mind you. Mm -hmm. Of course, but not. um, yeah. he, re he I mean, he kind of recognized that. Um, traditionally, more established um, event programmers like Vancouver Folk Fest or yeah. you know anything at even below that scale, a couple of tiers. Yeah. Um, those places typically will be able to access those grants, and he was like, okay, yeah, maybe there's a case to be made. Yeah. For maybe re-examining how we make those grants like at, at a lower Shit. barrier. So there we go. You know. All right, you made some points to me. Yeah. And he listens. Yeah, I feel I feel kind of bad because he he was doing like a summer announcement thing right, like at yeah. the PNE, so I like, drove up there and like all these like <laughs> all these event pro organizers like yeah, Dragon Boat Festival is happening, and they're yeah. like oh yeah, Vancouver Folk Fest, yeah. it's happening, so glad. And then yeah. I just asked him a bunch of yeah, questions exactly. about his like, like make why fun. do you suck so much? <laughs> <laughs> tell, tell me why and yeah. why you are not doing better. I yeah. asked him what's your idea of fun. Yeah, you know? <laughs> I asked him that? yeah, yeah. I was what like, what do you think? Say? He was like, look, look, I'm a I'm a 55 year old guy in a suit and tie. <laughs> Uh, you know, I'm not. I'm not gonna say what what fun is. I need to listen to like the you know the, the young answer. people that are yeah. actually. I was like, yeah, fair enough. That's the right answer. That is you know the right answer. answer. I mean, I mean, keep That's mind. too right. If, yeah. There is an election <laughs> coming right. up, yeah. right? It's October. Like that that election's coming up, and yeah. maybe maybe it's just like a a buy yeah. for people to vote for his party or whatever and him. But um, oh, well, hopefully yeah. he means it. Yeah. I know, uh, I know, uh, I, uh, Ian Cromwell is running for city council. That's right. Yes, I think he's he yeah, one local. city now. Yeah, yeah. Look, yeah. He would be good at that. Lounge. I think he'll do, he'd do fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, I, this I, isn't an official endorsement. But. No, yeah, yeah. No. I can't say anything as I <laughs> yeah. will be reporting on this stuff yeah, this literally. October. Yeah, yeah, but I'm yeah, like, exactly. oh, yes, indeed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure, that sure is happening. <laughs> you know, for those who, uh, who are interested in such issues, maybe, mm -hmm. uh, maybe have a look and see what kind of, uh, what kind of voting you can do to do things, you know? Oh, wow. Um, that anywho. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> whatever. Do whatever. Everybody do whatever you want. You yeah, know? Put a little disclaimer at the bottom yeah. of that. Everybody yeah. do whatever you want. Everybody do whatever <laughs> you want. Asterisk. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... You got a new single coming out this weekend. And... Uh, do you want to say anything about uh, what's going on with it, or you know what it's about, or whatever? What's yeah. going on? Yeah, you're not it's. Yeah. I guess not. Yeah, it's it's. Um, you can promote when, it. When the when I can when I start when I started lowercase dream it was very much like, I guess embodying a lot of like it, it was trying to mix bossa nova with dream yeah. pop at the yeah, same time. Yeah, you made like a sick. You know? Yeah, yeah. It was um, it was a cool it was a cool fusion. Yeah, and then you know the sound has developed since then into something that's really difficult for me to describe. Um, cool. You know, it mixes elements of jazz, it mixes elements of um, bossa nova and like indie pop and mm -hmm. just, you know, uh, like just different kinds of alternative music. Um, the song's called Void. It, yeah. it comes, uh, comes as we're celebrating Pride in Vancouver. Um, for me, that, song, that is a song about um, discovering my queerness and leaning into my queerness in a more um, earnest way in the last two years. Uh, during a pandemic when people were kind of, you know, I think a lot of queer people were inside of their own co co cocoons. Yeah. You know, like these were the years that I, that I came out publicly. Um, and those were feelings, those were truths that I kind of had to find by myself in, well, a void, you know yeah. what I mean? Of, of, just, of just my own, uh, yeah, um, you know, of thoughts I had to grapple with by, by myself. So that, that song um, is about meeting a new person a new part of me and I guess shaking his hand in an earnest way. That's cool. Mm -hmm. That's a uh... check ass promotion. <laughs> <laughs> Loved it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean it's 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 so neat to see you just like fucking uh just blossom the way that you have, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you're so you're so different. But so the same, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's uh, yeah, I'm really excited to see what happens. How is the how is like the the writing process? You know, because I know you you've been doing a lot of a lot of studio time and uh, yeah, I've been recording at Helm Studios, yeah, which is a, a nonprofit. That's right, job there tomorrow. That's right. Congrats. Nice. Congrats. Yeah. Um, what are you doing? <laughs> admin and like basically all of the nuts and bolts of running the nonprofit that cool. the main engineers don't want to do and don't have time for. Yeah. It is a great Those are different skill sets. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. a great studio run by Josh Eastman, mm -hmm. um, who helped found it and We love them. They um 
never met someone so I don't know. Josh just really, really cares. Josh about cares the about you with their whole heart when they're working with you. Like most producers don't give a shit. Mm. Like, in my experience, hmm. most producers are like, are you paying me? Okay, let's go. Chop, chop, don't fuck up. Don't waste right. my time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Josh is like, hey, welcome. How can I make you feel safe? What do you want to do? Do you want to, like, hang out? Do you want to get some food? Do you want to, like, listen to some music yeah. to get inspired? We're so lucky. To they don't Josh. rush you. They make you feel like what matters most is that you're enjoying yourself. Mm -hmm. And, like, that's why I make music, too. I think we have that in common. Mm -hmm. So, like, yeah, like... I think it's a special environment. It's, it's good to yeah. have safe spaces like that. Yeah. Especially when you get talked down to a lot as a musician. Because mm. sometimes you go into the studio and it's like, did I really pay you money to have you treat me like shit? Right. Yeah. Like, I would rather sit at home and produce a shitty record and have a good time. <clears throat> right. Yeah. But it's one of a couple studios that I've had good experiences at. Cool. Nice. How about you? Um, Probably had both as well. Well, uh, I've only really recorded at, yeah, at Helm and then also at um, Little Red Sounds in Blue? Westminster. Not Blue Light. No, no. Um, L Little Red Sounds was great too. Like Felix helped, Felix Funk helped us produce um, Bocelli and Push Bike for Casinos, and it was it was it was a very like rock and roll <laughs> environment. Yeah, <laughs> just like yeah. hacking darts and like playing guitars, like live takes on the floor. It was funny. It was a funny time. It's my first record too. No, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, I've had a, I've had a few like that in the barn when back when we used to be in the when we were in the shed. Yeah, I miss that place. That place had yeah, that place was a uh, a whole other world, you know, with a really mean dog and uh, and then he <sighs> eventually warmed up to no Not no me. he never liked you no he never I, liked I you. had to run and close the <laughs> gate at least once. Yeah. Jesus. At that yeah, place. Yeah, that was a Scary. yeah Cosmo. Rest mm -hmm. in peace, Cosmo. Yeah, no, it is super important to, like, because I've, I've learned as a producer, like, I've tried, you know, I've, I've been up and down and all around trying to figure out the best way to, you know, you know, decide what the goal even is, you know, because sometimes you, you come into it and you're like, well, I mean, obviously I've had times where I'm like, I am trying to get fucking paid right now, and yeah. because, you know, otherwise I will, will starve, you know, and shit like that. I've also had times where it's like, okay, well, am I trying to, make, you know, have this person have a good time? Do I want them to have, you know, come out, come out of this with a commercially viable product? And, you know, and do what are my, what do I bring to that equation? You know, and it's it, there's all these all these factors, and it comes down to, in the end, you know, now I'm just kind of like, I've kind of bypassed you know, my my egotistical input because I've had very 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 grandiose moments of that as well <laughs> but uh and then uh and then even past the 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 people that are coming to you with the songs and just landing on the song and that's and that seems to be where all the best synergy kind of comes from because you know a, a, a really good song is just something that resonates with you and takes you you know into a different place mentally or emotionally or spiritually or whatever and you know coming down to what the whatever that thesis statement that you're trying to make is and whatever the fuck you can do to make that happen you know and a lot of that you know so much of that comes from everybody feeling comfortable and being in a safe space where they feel like they can bring all of that into whatever it is you're trying to do and that's uh that it's not it's 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 not easy for everybody to to you know because everybody's different and everybody has different needs. So mm -hmm. it's a, it's it yeah it, it's a when I when I first got into making like producing I was just like yeah I'll just I'll work in a studio it'll be cool and then I didn't realize you know it's like yeah it's also like you gotta really care about people and you gotta really care and like respect and you know very treat everybody you know very gently because you're. They're they're coming to you to like to show you their open wounds sometimes, Pretty much. you yeah, know, all and the it time. <laughs> and you've got to you've sometimes you've got to like analyze them sometimes you've got to treat the wounds you know it's a yeah it's a lot of responsibility sometimes other times it's just like in and out 
Yeah, and yeah. yeah, sometimes it's a it's a country record. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm not a country fan, but I'm sure I'm I've, sure there's I, been some yeah. thought put in. No, oh absolutely. God. Yeah, I've had a, but I've had a, I've had a couple of times yeah. where it's somebody. I'm like, you're coming to me for a country record? All right, yeah. well, we're do gonna you, uh, whip through this. Yeah. Do, do you want to go see Wilco with me in September? <laughs> yeah. yeah really, Wilco's pretty good. I really do. I think yeah. Tickets are like seventy two bucks. I just need yeah. someone to go with so I can listen to sad country music. I want to <laughs> go to Wilco so much. I've got I've, I I bought Jeff Tweedy's book, How to Write One Song. Okay. Okay. And I'll, have you read it? I'll, I'll loan it to you. It's okay. great. Yeah, it, he approaches it from like you're a little baby and you've never written a song before, <laughs> <laughs> and and funny. everything it means to him. Uh, I recommend reading it, but I also recommend the audiobook of him narrating. Oh, it is oh, an audio book. Oh, okay, okay sure. so okay, so here's how much of a nerd I am. I have a, I pre-ordered it, so I got a signed copy. Um, but I also got uh, access to a 2020 style Zoom call with Jeff Tweedy and Nick Offerman. What the and Nick fuck? Offerman <laughs> introduced the book. That's amazing. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was. <laughs> I, I, I shouldn't say I wasn't involved in the Zoom call. It's not like right, I was right, right. talking to them. It oh, was. It oh, was Jeff oh, Tweedy oh. and Nick Offerman on a Zoom call, and I got to watch. From, <laughs> okay, from a I was like, room. what? But it was live. <laughs> So pretty cool. It, and comment, you know, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And it was, uh, yeah, it was a, it was, it was a, a foundational experience for for me going forward. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I've been I've been doing a lot of reading about the nature of creativity and what mm -hmm. what it means for our souls. Mm. And uh, I'm I've 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 come out on the other side of it, approaching things a lot differently. And I'm cool. I'm stoked to see what happens with it. Good. But, yeah. yeah. You've and, grown a lot of aging. I, uh, yeah, for, yeah, things change, you know, that's all they ever do. Sure that. Yeah. <laughs> things. Things change. Yeah, things change, dude. <laughs> Seasons change. <laughs> that was, yeah. That's a great song. Yeah, we, that was our, that was our one time Western Jaguar. Here's another, uh, uh, Boomer AJ story. Uh, <laughs> so Western Jaguar, one time I had, uh, I, w I was finishing my job at, at Big Box Music Location. Uh, as, a, as a salesperson uh, and at 5 p.m. And uh, then the band came to pick me up in Port Coquitlam and we had to drive to play a show in Kamloops. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, the, and, then, and, then and then we all had to work the next day because it was like a Sunday night uh, Brutal. or Who something. Who agreed to that? We because would we would never agree to it. Again. We, yeah. No, no, we yeah we we had agreed to it at the time because Royal Oak was going to play a show with us, mm -hmm. and in exchange we would play we would do an opening slot with them. Yeah, mm. right. And then we uh, so and we weren't the only ones coming from the city, right? Uh, so we came out from Port Coquitlam. Uh, drove out to Kamloops to play a the bar. venue. I don't remember the name of it. It was some bar. The Wolf. I don't know. I'm just yeah. throwing out. Yeah, it was bar some like some like country yeah, bar awesome. in Kamloops. <laughs> yeah, there's like you know literally like tumbleweeds rolling through. Like it was it was rough. Like I'm so glad I ruined my body for this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so we and we drove out yeah. to Kamloops and then drove back that night and uh, and we and it was uh, that was Brent had left for Toronto by that point. It was Ryan Domingo, yeah. and you and me and Jeff and. And we we've listened to that song like seven or eight times on the drive, <laughs> and then we I yeah that, that was song. the theme song of the whole. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Seasons change. Seasons change. And there was uh, that guy. yeah, oh, man, that was a great <laughs> night. And here's the here's the best part. Uh, the lineup for that show would fucking slay today because it was it was uh, Western Jaguar, Royal Oak, and Kai Bravewood. Oh yeah, true. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, kind of everyone did get bigger. Yeah. Are they still doing? I don't stuff know. Now? I don't know. They they kind of yeah. fell off the map in the pandemic. I know uh, Tyler is uh, doing a lot of painting. Last I saw. Yeah. But uh, different focuses. Yeah, things things change. Yeah. Seasons change. Seasons change, and so yeah, we yeah. But the funny thing is that was uh, yeah, that was two a two three people three people in Kamloops, mm -hmm. uh, and uh couple years later we were back in Kamloops doing a little tour uh, when the lineup had totally changed you were you were taking a, a break from the band yeah and I was playing guitar and we had a actually yeah totally different lineup because uh yeah we it was me and Davis and Jeff and mm -hmm. Dave and <laughs> we played a pizza place in Kamloops that was not meant to host they have even more venue problems <laughs> than Vancouver does we complain a lot yeah. but yeah we were we were playing a pizza place that didn't have a stage you know and it had like and four then. tables <laughs> yeah but they uh pizza pie 
<laughs> uh, and they, uh, but PI because their address is like three one four. Anyway, oh, uh, love it. Anyway, yeah, oh, it was. It, they had a whole actually. aesthetic. It was really good. A circle, you know, duh, pizza. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, amazing. And one of the people uh, at was at that show that we played with with Kai Bravewood and Royal Oak. They came what up part? and they were like, they're like, I saw you guys on the poster, and I was like, I gotta see those guys again. I was like, <laughs> thank yeah. you. So the the, staying power. the, the yeah amazing. music music heals, and it is a good respect. <laughs> you know, funny venues to play. One of my favorite shows that I saw you play was at no, the caveman don't. cafe i hate this so it was much. it was great the summary is caveman bad. cafe where where and what in, like in chinatown literally you know? last ditch effort like the venue crapped out and <laughs> the promoter was like i'm just gonna walk into places in the area and ask them if they can host. he paid them 200 dollars oh to i feel like a show i heard about does this that? yeah but he Pull he it does. Off. He does. That. Yeah. Who I was, which who else was on that bill? Oh, it was the Plodes. Uh, and plodes. and uh, the Max mm. is in that band. Um, L- L- Laverne. Laverne. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, Laverne. I remember that. Yeah, I yeah. I saw. It. I've definitely found out about that from Laverne's Instagram page. And it was weird. Yeah. I thought the sound was actually good. It was surprisingly because but like the vibe was so weird. It was weird. funny. Like there's people eating like eating like <laughs> like keto <laughs> food and they're like. <laughs> That's the like, like, K-Fan Cafe like, part what's going food. on? Uh, it's like, like, like because vegan he had the rest brownies. Of <laughs> yeah. They're like, who, with their children, they're like, who who are these people? Yeah, just suddenly a show. They're like, I came in here for a late night snack. DIY yeah. or die, baby. And all these people are screaming <laughs> totally. at me. You guys are like all wearing leather. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure That's Tay so was funny. wearing assless chaps that night. <laughs> Almost positive. Oh. And my coworker was supposed to see me, but Amazing. they left. Amazing. For reasons I understand. <laughs> for reasons. Because it was at the Caveman Cafe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we should yeah. move the show to the Caveman Cafe. Yeah. <laughs> you still, you still ne- next time your venue craps. Well, there's always the Caveman Cafe. Great place to dine. And that's yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say I'd play there again. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And uh, so, so when's when's the next Primp release? How that? No how idea. that at though? No idea. No. Cool. Um, we don't have any money because mm-hmm. we haven't played any shows for two years right. and we're all broke, yeah. so yep. can't tell ya. Cool. Hopefully, we will make some money on these shows and throughout the summer. And how many? Then, how many do you have booked right now? Uh, th- two. This one and another one after that, and I forget all the details. Cool. That one. Sweet. All right. Cool. <laughs> uh, I have a shit memory. Awesome. But Sweet. I can I can recall it later. Yeah, recall it later, it. and then I'll put it in the description of the video. And then yeah. if one or three people watch this, then uh, Perfect. maybe maybe July something. maybe half of them will show up. You know, half mm-hmm. of one of the three. You know, uh, cool. yeah, that'd be sweet. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, it's uh, it's super cool to uh, just sit and shoot the shit because it's it's a very I'm I'm learning as I kind of. I've I've shot like ten of these podcasts now, <laughs> in a very short period of time, and I've had, I've seen a lot of like common threads come up in the conversations that I'm really happy about. Oh shit! I forgot I gotta ask you the question. I gotta ask everybody. Mm. Uh, so when you're listening to a streaming service or like Spotify or whatever, eventually you get to the end of the album or whatever that you're listening to, and the algorithm tries to like recommend something, and at first it'll try to recommend things, and then at other times it'll just play a thing it thinks you like you know and it usually defaults to like the same stable of songs for or or one song and i call it my like spotify has given up song and i'm trying to like plot everybody's sort of spotify has given up Mm. song just to see you know what which one comes up over and over yeah like you get to the end of your playlist and you like some for some people it's like a visceral like hate that comes up when they hear that song Uh, oh man yeah i don't know do i have one that's consistent or not it's a good question do you yeah, I th- I think would probably I'm just like thinking about them. I don't know the exact one, but from the frequency of songs I've listened to, yeah, um, probably Rocky Trail by Kings of Convenience. And I like that song, but like fuck, <laughs> <laughs> like, stop making me listen to it. <laughs> Actually, I can't think of one. Um, and I love the same thing. I love this song. But um, I don't want to be funny anymore by Lucy Dacus. I, that's on. That's in my list. That's in okay, my rotation. Yeah, for yeah. Sure. Like every yeah. time I hear, da na 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 yeah. na na. I'm like, listen. I want to listen to it again someday. I'll but tell not you. Now. I'll tell you when I want to hear this song. <laughs> you don't. You don't have to. You yeah. don't have to come into my house. 
yeah. and tell me how I be. And then there's always like songs that you used to listen to a lot because they reminded you of a person that you used to like. Yeah. And yeah. then they come, they still come on all the time when you're recommended. Because the algorithm doesn't know. Yeah, that and the, you're the, like, the listen, we changed. broke up. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Turns out they were a dick. Yeah. 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 So. yeah I've got, I've got one or two of those, but the. Uh, my Tame Impala. <laughs> So it has a, probably a couple Tame Impala songs that are, yeah. I've, uh... Toxic yeah. vibe. <laughs> you know it's only one guy? Tame yeah, Impala. oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah! Oh, I know! If I had a nickel for every time yeah. someone said that to me. I have, yeah. Did you know that Kevin Parker is a guy? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Australia man, Kevin Parker. <laughs> He's the producer, yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're, we're in this place where i think there's way more rad music than we could ever possibly deal with you know like yeah. there's more That's good fun. tv than we could ever possibly Too watch there's we're adding to this problem aj we need to cut these yeah we gotta cut oh, ourselves everybody cut media. off cut off your hands and ears you know? yeah but we're i mean yeah if it would help <laughs> yeah, yeah whatever i can do i would if it would help yeah it's uh but yeah, there, I feel like in 20 years, we're going to find out about rad shit that came out today, you know, yeah. that we d just didn't know about. Probably. I got I suppressed of, like, by an algorithm. that like, came out, like, just a year ago, you know, like, fuck. Same. Dude, yeah. What the hell? Like, yeah. Sometimes you'll see something you love, and then it just completely leaves because you have so much other shit in there. Yeah. Totally. No, I know. It's like, yeah. I, I, it's, uh, it's, I need to, you know, I, I'm, I've been building my, like, ADHD-proof playlist of, mm. uh, uh, don't laugh here. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so I have to make a playlist of every song I like or else I'll forget. <laughs> yeah, I, I have a private that. playlist that nobody's allowed to I know like about that's these. just called every song I like <laughs> so Amazing. I don't forget. Because <laughs> when people are like, what songs do you like? like and, and I'm well, brain well, empty. Yeah, yeah same, I have to go look. To well. Yeah, yeah. What kind of music do you like? And then I'll say something that's like more recent but not really very true. Yeah, and then <laughs> like, think about it later uh, and you're like, that wasn't uh, right. I love Tame Impala. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're like, oh no, that's the one shit, thing I, I look stupid. Said. I look so stupid. <laughs> yeah, I do that sometimes too. I was yeah. listening to a playlist on the way over here so that I would remember yeah. which music I like. Yeah, just gotta, mm -hmm. I gotta get into character as me. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Could be anything as far as I'm concerned. Right. Wilco yeah. just put out a nice sad country album. Yeah. I actually liked, a re like a Wilco song came on my Discovery weekly or like release yeah. radar i think whatever so, something, it is a spotify yeah. generated thing yeah. and yeah. i remember liking it actually i thought it was it was yeah. good for a more recent Wilco song yeah it was like you know northern transmissions that that blog like had a good take on it they were like this is the album america needs right <laughs> now <laughs> It's really dramatic. Yeah, I was like, yeah. I'm like, sure, like you just like, like yeah, bunch Wilco's of kids getting shot and stuff. World. America's <laughs> America's struggling. Okay, it's wait, yeah. is it a political album? I don't know, but it feels good. It's comfortable. It's like it like warms you in a time when I think when America's like America's oh, kind of like a bunch see. of like shootings yeah. and shit. I just see. It's yeah. on the something that's like. It's like we need a security blanket. Yeah. I don't think Jeff Tweedy was like. Oh shit! We've got to get this album out now. <laughs> yeah. We got to get this done because the people songs need it. Long. Yeah, wow, what prolific! Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah, I've never made a full length release, and I'm and I'm about to embark on the process of, of putting it together, and it, yeah. it's it's a it's a thing. It's a whole shit, ordeal. Hard. Yeah, How, you've done whole albums. Yes. Yeah. But shit was still hard. Like I feel like I was like just scraping. Yeah. I only yeah I only ever did one and it was barely an album. Yeah. yeah. Barely. I've, I've been reading um, uh, this book called Process and Creativity by Jesse Cannon. He's a YouTuber that talks a lot about uh, sort of he he worked in A and R for like Warner Music and stuff and he ba basically tries to take everything he's learned as a as a like a major label executive as like an A and R guy and like boil it down to actual actionable things people can do in like the DIY space you know and he's a really really good watch you know if you want to kind of come up with like more you know real ways of like working with a fan base and like marketing yourself as a musician that don't feel fake and bullshit you know the way that we've all been kind of conditioned to behave. <laughs> and uh, anyway, he has this book uh, where he basically talked to a lot of his like songwriting friends and his producer friends and, you know, people that work with really big acts and talked about like the every, everybody's sort of process for, you know, from the little nugget of an idea to an album and then kind of boiled it all down, did all the nerd work, you know, yeah, and found all the common threads. Cool. But well, check that out. yeah, really, really cool book. But yeah. uh, I think 
it's uh, he's got the audiobook for free somewhere yeah. on one of his podcasts if you look into that as well. You guys got commercials on the show? I got to use the washroom. Huh? Oh, got yeah. Pee? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll just go ahead and mute this real quick. Yeah, you just hey, mute that wait. real quick. Um, you also <laughs> this is like totally unrelated to what we're talking about right now. Yeah. Those cigarettes, I was supposed to e transfer you for them and then you never gave me any of the spokes of the pack. <laughs> on Thursday. Right. Remember that's a good point. what that's happened? A good point. Did you smoke them all? No, no, I still have plenty. Are they at your house? They are. Fuck. What good are they to me at your house? <laughs> oh here. No, it's fine. Sorry. I Sorry, I, did, I didn't know what we were going to do with them. You know, I, mean, like, <laughs> I was like, what are you, I guess I'll just keep smoking some of these. <sighs> like, the audacity. I know. Sorry, I don't you need fucking one, nicotine. Don't need... I would like some. But I don't have any. But I'll get some later. Maybe. Okay. Next time I see you. I'm going to save some because they were fresh on the action. It feels like it feels nice. like Kira's gonna shut the door and we'll just never see him again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Jug of milk. We finish a lot of our conversations this way. Yeah, yeah. You just, you just get a fucking, hanging. Yeah. Well, like I'll we'll finish this later. Yeah. He's just gonna nope out. Yeah, yeah. He's a uh, he's my very best friend. Yeah. How, how long have you known Kira? I met him in college, oh, okay. and uh, he was actually the editor in chief of the school newspaper. I and then yeah. I became the editor in chief of the school newspaper as soon as he left. Oh, okay. Um, so like weirdly, he was like, "Yes, let's hire her." And then he dipped, and then yeah. I like didn't see him for a long time. And it wasn't until I started living alone, right? And I left a really, really awful relationship, and I had to like start new. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, who am I going to be friends with? Like, who huh. do I even like? <laughs> and the last person I thought of who was really nice to me, who I remember really, like, sticking in my head was Kier. And I was like, Kier was awesome. He was a great writer. Yeah. Like, I remember ha him having so much personality in his writing. Like, I should reach out to him. He's so eloquent. He is so, yeah. so eloquent. And he's so expressive. He's yeah. really, really good at that. And... We hung out, uh, we, I forget what we did, I think we just drove around, we went to like a few shows together, and we were both in a really dark place, but like we just make each other laugh, mm -hmm. I don't know, I think we bring out sort of silliness in each other, um, and we kind of have like a brother-sister dynamic, and it's really nice to be able to reconnect, but it, I think about how weird it is all the time that like, originally he was my boss, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck, yeah. I was like, what? 18 years old yeah. but it's been a long time yeah that's rad we both kind of went through like the traditional part of our lives without each other mm -hmm. and then i think outgrew it and reconnected um and have been like doing a lot of changing also since we started hanging out again yeah which is well i mean which is cool because that's what things are supposed to do oh well, it's nice when you yeah. have friends who help you change yeah no i'll my uh, yeah there's it's it's strange my my like friends that from from you know back when i used to live in like small town <laughs> you know and it's like a different the the energy's totally different right. now and right. it's uh it's it's weird it's i have like this instead of just hanging out to people to <coughs> hang out you gotta get to choose yeah exactly yeah you're like hold on wait i'm not forced into this based off of geography anymore. right exactly yeah. just proximity yeah. just like I've how got, close someone is to you i've got this really 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 great uh, video of Kier um, on my phone. We went. Um, I was one of the few times Brent was visiting in the la like before the pandemic in like 2019. And there's one bar in Abbotsford that has been like 40 different names. Oh yeah. Since since yeah. Uh, it, you thinking of the Vicinity Lounge? Vicinity Lounge <laughs> potentially, or the Copper Owl, it or was either uh -huh. that or that Brothers. Brothers. Yeah. Brothers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. so uh, and yeah and so. Smell that place. Yeah. I, yeah. You. That was a uh, that was the first Western Jaguar show. Was that Brothers what? Bowling and Billiards. Was, yeah, yeah, yeah it, was, it was eleven Humble bands beans. on the bill f on one night. Eleven. Yeah, it was it was insane. It what was the fuck? It, every show at Brothers. It's yeah. that one Booker that was just yeah, weird. That promoter needed to be stopped. Yeah, <laughs> and he was. I, 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 like, you were I wrote to get him. I wrote some <laughs> missive on Facebook and. <laughs> I was just mad. I should, you, you, know, you were, I, yeah, you, you were like, no, we're boycotting. Yeah, was, yeah. I remember, I, I'm like, who is this person? I had never, I wasn't a part of the scene at all. Yeah. And Kier was like, starting the shit. 
He great. would, yeah. He had a little firecracker. Yeah, he was mad. He was mad, yeah. He was like keeping re- he, he was keeping pay from people that yeah. were trying to book shows and like. If he was doing shit that was ethically wrong. Yeah, oh, he was him. absolutely in the wrong. He yeah. was totally yeah, in the him. wrong. But it was but Kier was the only one brave enough to stand up to him. I was like, yeah. fuck this guy. I was like, can't <laughs> do I that. I can't do that anymore. I gotta, yeah, yeah, I gotta calm I gotta, down a I little bit. I got a name. I got a name to uphold. But You're like, I'm going to Facebook.com. I'm gonna ruin your life. I will destroy you. I will destroy you and everybody you love. Maybe you yeah. were right. Yeah, yeah. He was. Kier was always. Kier's always on the right side. Um, but we. I, uh, I hope so. Yeah. So we were in. We were. In, we, were in, <laughs> we were. In, we were in vicinity lounge. Uh, let's let's say that's what it was called at the time, and we were just having. And I hadn't. You were. You were still living in Abbotsford. You hadn't moved yet, but I think you were working. You know, for a different TV station. And, yeah. And uh, or maybe you had just taken the job there. You had just gotten your first TV gig, and you were kind of yeah. stoked on it. And you were just getting your first apartment. And, like good times. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, you were in yeah. A, this other tran- transition phase of your life, mm-hmm. you know. And I was, I don't remember where I was. That was it was probably not great. But we were, <laughs> <laughs> we were I, yeah, we were just like drinking scotch at the vicinity lounge. Yeah. And there was and there was and this was on like a Wednesday evening, so not not a, there's not a ton going on mm-hmm. on a Saturday yeah. night, but you know, and then. uh and then this like really really old Chinese lady came up to you, oh, yeah. or came up to us, and was like, "You're a couple of handsome guys, or something, like a couple of handsome <laughs> fellas out for a night on the town." Something weird. She said something straight. It was like a tw- it was a Twin Peaks dialogue, yeah. you know. And then and then, I don't. There's a blank period, like af- from her approaching the table, and then I uh, I what turned happened? and I ordered a beer, <laughs> and then uh, and then I turned back around. And Kier's on the dance floor with this 80-year-old woman. Oh, my God. Dance the ballroom dance? dancing with this woman. Beautiful. It's coming back to me. Yeah, yeah, it's coming back to me now. Yeah. 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 And I yeah, and I took a video of it and and I've never oh, I didn't I didn't, I didn't post yeah. it anywhere I didn't I I didn't share it with anybody I it was it was stopped. it was just for me that's cute it was just for, it was I was like I danced with it I, oh that I remember it was like an 80 year old woman I remember her was yeah. it nice oh, it was nice it was so <laughs> nice it was just one like song nice it was like a Sinatra song or something oh, that's such a cute yeah. I, that's so cute I love this it was yeah you know. And now wow. I just I kept that video in my phone yeah. in my in my so iCloud camera lady. roll from from iPhone to iPhone and I would go to check just to make sure it was still <laughs> there. Sometimes I still need this video. Yeah, here. I, I, yes, yeah, I still yeah. need it. Yeah, please don't lose this, Tim Cook. It's you know, precious <laughs> to me. Yeah, don't delete this video, yeah. Apple. I need it. Yeah, thanks for digging that one out of the archive. That was wow. yeah, that was, and that was, I don't think yeah, Very care behavior. It didn't it didn't seem unseemly uh, by Kier standards at all, but it was very <laughs> yeah, like no one else would do this. No, 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 and and the funny thing is that is that Kier didn't even Kier didn't even talk about it uh, <laughs> after again like I didn't it meant nothing to Kier and it was uh, it, it, yeah no yeah. Like, not to not to disparage the old woman and, yeah and it yeah you just, to you? it was it, no it was it, Kier was like of course I will brighten this old woman's day no problem <laughs> yeah yeah right yeah. and then no you do have that about you exactly like, like as soon as I met you I was like you're the kind of guy my grandma would like yeah totally and then. And then That's nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. You always got a stiff collar and a good attitude. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Got a can-do attitude. Yeah. Well, thanks. <laughs> yeah, He's a real go-getter. go-getter. <laughs> you like, I could pinch your cheeks. Yeah, real. You have very uh, pinchable cheeks. Real, real Johnny Hustle. Yeah. Know? Very. <laughs> dancing with strangers. Yeah. yeah. Dancing with strangers. It was mm-hmm. a yeah. It was a be- It was a beautiful evening, and it was a. Uh, it was a very. It was a. It was a my dinner with Andre level of <laughs> level of class. Oh yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah, like French cinema. How it, sauced was I? Who knows? Dude, we had like one drink. <laughs> So I was that? probably sober. Yeah, yeah, you were you were stone sober. Yeah, yeah. You made that call in sound mind. Oh well, yeah, we'll yeah. I feel like I would, like you would do it again, honestly. Yeah, <laughs> you're, you're right. Yeah, I feel like you're it was right. it was it was exactly yeah. I, I, I remember I remember leaving, driving my like, like shitty beat up 1998 you know broken car back from Abbotsford to Maple Ridge or wherever I was living at the time and going like man. I needed that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you just do. Yeah, yeah. That's and that's and that's what cure is for. <laughs> yeah, you're a little sunshine. Yeah. Oh, thanks, God. In this, uh, in this fucking world, dude. <laughs> Christ. Sometimes, you, sometimes you get a little disheartened. Yeah. yeah. But then yeah. you're like, hey, actually, I'm great. Yeah. Yeah, you know me, Allie. I know, <laughs> really I, know well. I know. You know what? I know. Actually, 
Ali's my best friend. Yeah. Oh. I was just, I just said, yeah, my that's very best that's friend. amazing. Entirely unprompted. <laughs> yeah. Ali said the exact same thing while you were in the bathroom. Mm-hmm. Nice. I'm glad to have, I'm glad to have gotten that arc all the way. Yeah. I was gonna wrap this podcast up. I was just getting to the end of it, and then you were like, oh. I gotta go to the bathroom, yeah. and then and then we were able to pull out another half hour <laughs> of, of very, very wholesome, of wholesome content. care content. <laughs> Man, I'm trying to recall all of the wholesome things you've done, but there's so many, I don't even know. There's so many. We've been through a lot together. You're good with people, I'm good with animals. Do you like, do you, are you like, do you like walk into the woods and just go like, I talk to birds all the time, yeah. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. The crows, specifically. The crows really like me. Uh, Ayla and I have been trying to win over the crows. It's... And I don't know, you just gotta, you, honestly, you gotta look them in the eye, you gotta talk to them like a friend. Yeah, so we've been... So they like it for some reason. We've been yeah. going to, like, we were we were going to Trout Lake uh, every day for a little while with cat food and trying to train them to come to us, <laughs> and... Uh, the effort. Yeah. Respected. I, no, yeah, we, every day we were putting in, wow. because because what if you're getting mugged in Trout Lake, and you just, true. and then all of a sudden the crows come just to your defense. Bombing. It's true. That'd be that, awesome. That'd be sick as fuck, be right? Awesome. Yeah. yeah, and so, yeah, last time we were doing that, uh, or one of the last times... Uh, um, we uh, we were there, and I actually bumped into Kieran that's Oliver, right. That's right. and and then that's how I ended up the drummer for ACPDF for this oh, next what? show. That's yeah, wild. <laughs> yeah, it was that's just wild. randomly <clears throat> bumping into you. At, yeah. Speaking of crows, though, like, what are you guys' thoughts on Canuck the crow? Love that. Lo- love love Canuck. Canuck. The What's crow? not to love about Canuck? Just like, I, Canuck I mean, died, right? Probably. Canuck like, had a baby. Canuck was and chunky. also died. Honky. Legend. Absolute legend. Like, How you know a baby that picture of Canuck the Crow with like the kni- like the steak knife yeah. in his mouth? Yeah. I so met That's Canuck. from a murder scene. It's from a murder scene. Did you ever meet Canuck? No, I didn't. But I, wow. I love I love all the pics of, of him. Like Local legend. Yeah. Yeah, Canuck the Crow was smoking a cigarette at um oh my god, Lee Side Skate Park back in the fucking day. <laughs> so awesome. And I was at <laughs> At my shitty, shitty ex-boyfriend's shitty, shitty band show. And it was shitty. (laughs) But But Canuck Canuck was was there. there. (laughs) Solidarity. Canuck was there, and they gave him a cigarette, and I said, hey... That's not very nice. He doesn't know that it's toxic. Yeah, yeah. You gotta, you gotta. He's gotta know the risks before you make a <laughs> call like, like that's that. That's non-consensual. <laughs> yeah. You can't do that to Canuck. And everyone was like, Shh, "What?" Yeah. I'm taking a picture. <laughs> 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 yeah. And then that picture went viral on Twitter. Oh. <laughs> Weird. Yeah. So yeah, I like Canuck. Yeah. yeah. He's a cool guy. He's pretty cool. You know, what a legend. Cool crow. Did you see the crows when like they're all like rained on and they're all kind of like wet and like their feathers are all sticking yeah. together? It's really cute. Yeah, I love that. I like all kinds of crows though. Mm-hmm. I was on my balcony earlier and there were two crows across from us on the construction site and they were hopping from one beam to the other beam and going ha ah! every time they did it and we were just staring there watching them like like what are you guys trying to like why for fun? Crows are weird like that. They do weird shit Crows constantly. Have fun. I, you don't really just it, to like play. Yeah, other yeah, birds. Really other cute. birds do fun differently. You know, some of them will sing yeah. to each other. Some of them will, you know, Throw sticks fly around. around. <laughs> yeah, crows. Crows look at their environment and go, "What can we do?" They make yeah. games. Yeah, you know? well, I think that's why they hang out awesome. in the construction rubble all the yeah. time. Um, I would love to go play in a construction site. <laughs> I literally, we were like, we should can't go hang fly. out over there, yeah. but it's really we might die. Yeah, so. exactly. You got, you got an outhouse there. You, could, they, you would, It's like a playground with an outhouse. You would, <laughs> all, imagine you know, all the food that the construction workers probably just like they're dropping from like the big I beams. And yeah, stuff, yeah. Like, when they're like eating their lunch up yeah. on the, up on the all beams. Together, like to be a crow, meat. I hope I get reincarnated as a crow. Reincarnated. Reincarnated. Anyway, that's the end of the podcast. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> right, I wanted to leave it on reincarnated because that's the cleverest thing I'm gonna say. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, so, Colonated. lowercase dream. And Primp, make music. You can check it out. Uh, I'll leave that up to you. I'm not going to play it for you. You're an adult. You can go look it up. Um, and I've been Eridonis. This is just it's just an Eridonis podcast. It's no big deal. And uh, we'll all be playing June 25th at Redgate with, uh, for the Sylvia Platters album release. It'll be groovy. Get, get that cassette, you know. Come hang out. It's act- It's legitimately going to be uh, like a, a, a local... It's going to be an Abbotsford legend time, I yeah. think. I hope We're well. not even from Abbotsford. Tay's from Abbotsford. Yeah. My drummer's from Abbotsford. Yeah. So. Interesting. I didn't know that. What do you mean? I didn't know that. Aldergrove? 
Alder Grove, Alder Grove. Oh yeah, I think they're from Alder Grove. We go there sometimes. I should know mm-hmm. this. I met them when they went the to Valley. Delta. Yeah. yeah. The Valley. Yeah. The Valley. We were. I was talking with the Nick, girl. and we were like, "Do you think Aaron Levy will come?" Oh God, Aaron Levy used to be my boss at um my, at the radio yeah. station. So yeah. I haven't seen him in years. <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen him in years either. I've, yeah, yeah I, I'm. Uh, wow, I wonder if Aaron Levy will come. Right. Could, it's 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 a perfect come. like conditions are perfect for yeah, an Aaron Levy Aaron appearance. <laughs> You'll hear him. The weather yeah. is looking like Aaron Levy. Yeah. We'll mm. see. You know, you know, he's like baseball cap. You know. like... <laughs> he's always squinting. He's like some step out for a smoke. He would have a cigarette for me. He would, yeah, he would have one. He'd be leaning against a, a wall in his leather jacket. Here you go. Yeah. Here's your cigarette. Anyway, we can hope. We can. Uh, yeah, we can. Have a good one, everybody.